Welcome everybody, Jason Hoppy here to walk you through another lesson in Adobe Illustrator. This one we're going to talk, be talking about the direct selection tool. And the direct selection tool is one of those items that allows you to go in and manipulate shapes beyond just rotating and moving and scaling items. And we've got the selection tool, which is up here in the toolbar. The letter V is the selection tool. And we have the direct selection tool. So with the selection tool, we select our shapes and we're able to see our pull handles, which we can pull from the corners or the midsections when we're dealing with a rectangle or a square. When you select a circle, you can again pull from the midpoints of the corners and also hover over the outside to rotate the shapes however you'd like. And again, any other shape, you're going to get your pull handles. But the direct selection tool allows you to go in and manipulate those points individually. So instead of going in and just scaling the entire thing larger, the direct selection tool allows me to pull just this one corner. Now, here's where the trick comes in. When you are using the direct selection tool, if you happen to have your object selected and then you switch over to your direct selection tool, which is the letter A, I get a lot of input from people that says, you know, it never works for me because I had my shape selected, I switched over to the direct selection tool, and then I try to pull those handles and the whole shape moves. I thought the direct selection tool was supposed to work where I just click on a point and I can move that point independent from everything else. And that is absolutely correct. The problem is, is that when you start off with the selection tool and you select a shape and you go over to the direct selection tool, your shape is already active. When you click on the direct selection tool, every single point is active. What am I talking about here? Well, I'm going to click off this shape with the direct selection tool and show you. When I have a shape that is not selected and I select the direct selection tool and I click on the shape, you will see all the points that make up that shape are now selected. And I want to be very clear about what I'm talking about being selected and being active. This shape is selected, which means the whole point is select or the whole shape is selected. These points are selected, but they are not active. Active means when you click on a specific point, it is solid blue. That means that it's active and it will work independently of everything else. So if you select that shape with your selection tool and then come back with your direct selection tool, let me try that again, select it with the selection tool, come back with a direct selection tool, you will see that all those points are active, meaning that they're all going to move because they're all solid blue. If you click on the one point that you'd like to move with your direct selection tool, you'll notice that all the other ones will become deactive and the one that you want to move is now active. So you can move this all around. Now, these points can be tricky to select because they're very small to begin with. So we can fix that. Under the Illustrator menu on the Mac, under Preferences, or Edit menu on the PC, we're going to go under Preferences and select our Selection and Anchor Display. And here you can control the size of your points and handles from the default, which can be very small, to very large. I set it up to be very large so you can see what we're doing. Now, if I want to select a point to simply move around, I can either come in and simply select that point and make it active. Dark blue is active. Light blue is selected but not active. And then I can move that point all around. If I would like to select two points at once, I can simply click in an area outside my artwork and select multiples at once. If I have a hard to select area where I'd like to select three, not a problem. You can select one or click and drag over one or click and drag over two. And if you want to add any of them to it, hold your shift key down on any active point, on any selected point, and then it becomes active. If I have all four of them selected and I would like to deactivate, hold down your shift key and any one that is active, you can simply deactivate. Anything that's dark blue is active, so now I can pull those points and move them around without any problem. Now, we're dealing with a rectangle. So when I click on any of these points here and they become active, nothing happens other than the points becoming active and you see you get your little corner widget because 
once you select a corner on a rectangle or a square or a polygon, you will get your corner widgets. It's different when I'm working with a circle or an ellipse. When I select this shape, if I select the whole thing, you will see that it's selected and all the points are active because they're dark blue. If I'd like to select just one point, I simply click on it. That's the only one that's active. Now, these give me pull handles. And the reason why is because we have two different types of corners. Two different types of points, actually. We have corner points, where they simply meet at a corner. Or we have curves. So we can have a corner point, which I just showed you, or we can have a curved point right there. This is obviously a curved point. And when I direct select that point, I'm going to get pull handles coming out of that point. Now the pull handles, of course, go the direction of the curve. So this handle points this way, this one goes this way, and the more you pull that handle, the more of a curve you get. Pull that in, the less of a curve you get. And these handles are directly activated from directly selecting that point, and then with the direct selection tool, you can then move those handles. Nice and simple. If you want to do two at once, you can click on an active, uh, click on a point, activate it, shift click on another point, and then you get those two points working in unison. Pretty awesome. So when it comes to a polygon or a star, when I click on the entire shape here, you see all the points are selected here, but none of them are active because none of them are dark blue. If I'd like to go in and I would like to just grab the inside ones, I can do that with this star by carefully starting outside and just running my selection over those points to make those all active. If I would like to select all the outer points when I have the inner point selected and deselect the inner points here, if you hold down your shift key and select the entire star, all the points that were selected become deselected, all the points that weren't selected now become selected. It's a pretty awesome way to do that. Now the other trick is, go over to your lasso tool. And your lasso tool allows you to freeform and select any points that you want. So if you did want to select all the outer points and you didn't know that trick of selecting the inner ones, shift clicking and then selecting the entire piece, you can use your lasso tool and you can go over and just select all the outer points like this and get all of your outer points directly selected. Then go back to your direct selection tool and then you can move that all around and create some pretty amazing stuff. Now, along with these points that you have, you can also directly select a portion of the line, basically the segment that connects those two points together. And if you select that segment and then you delete it, this is going to open up your shape. And this is true on any path that you do. Now, if you select a point and you delete that point, you are going to be deleting both lines that come out of that point. Okay, So let me back up here. So if I select the line segment and delete it, just the segment goes away. But if I select that point and delete it, I'm going to lose this line segment and this line segment because they're both attached, making that point. Now, why would I do something like this? Well, I may want to have an open shape so that I can fill this shape or do something with this where I don't have the closed shape. And this will work very well. If I'd like to open up any of these other shapes, select the line segment and just and delete, and just that line segment will go away. But if I select the point, both segments that make up that point will go away. Now, one last thing, if I would like to go back and close up those shapes that I have opened up, I can do it in one of two ways. I can simply select the shape with my selection tool and then go under the object menu, go down to path and choose join, which is command or control J. Or I could specify which points I would like to join. And I could select that point there and I could then shift click and select that point there and perform my command or control J and it's going to connect those lines together. Now if I had two shapes that I would like to go in and connect together, the direct selection tool is going to work very well. I'm going to take two shapes here, I'm going to switch over to the direct selection tool, and I'm going to directly select just the line segment and delete it, and just this line segment and delete it. Now, if I would like to join these two shapes together, I can select the shapes with a selection tool, 
and I could just use my command or control J and it just joins them together. I'm going to undo this because what happens if I'd like to go in and I would like to connect this point to this point down here? Well, that's where the direct selection tool comes in. I'm going to directly select and activate that point, hold down my shift key and activate that point. And now when I do my command or control J, it's going to tell this that I want those connected together. So there's my command or control J. If I perform that command or control J one more time, it's going to connect the other points there. It should. I have to tell it. Click on that one with the direct selection tool. Shift click on that one with the direct selection tool. Do my command or control J. And now I can connect those together. So that's just a quick little tutorial on understanding the direct selection tool just a little bit better. And I know that's going to be helpful.